Welcome back to Crystal Clear. I'm Ashrik Vox, and we're all still thinking about how Steven Universe the movie will bridge the gap between season five and season six of the show. Everything being a whole new ballpark. Something else we're wondering is who will be the new antagonist. After all, we just got done dealing with three. Where do we go from here? Are we gonna go from three villains to just one brand new one? Are we going to deal with an entire race of aliens? Maybe Rebel Gems? But how could an elite gem live up to the diamonds? Or will there be no villain at all? And Steven really will get his happily ever after back. Season six just tying up very loose ends? Although, come on, Change Your Mind was the highest rated program of this year thus far for Cartoon Network. I don't think they're letting this property go anytime soon. So what if I told you the villain for the film? Would was actually just a small part of the next big threat. And how the next big threat may be something new, yet uh, very familiar. If it wasn't for the title of this video, you guys may be scratching your head, but since you did see the title, just allow me to explain myself. All right, so fan art is a wonderful thing. It shows the growth, passion, and puts the unity in community. For some, it can even be a foot in the door into the animation industry. And for others, maybe making some commission money from doing thumbnails for some weird cartoon theory channel. However, fan art for shows like Steve Universe can also double as a theory, or at least fuel the flames and inspire one. Which brings us here today. An artist over on Instagram, Inky Icky, recently uploaded and tagged us in some fan art, showcasing what she refers to as the Cubic Zirconia replacement diamonds. For those who may be out of the loop, I am strongly rooting for the idea that the villain for this film is actually a failed replacement of Pink Diamond, potentially created in the grief for the original Pink after she staged her shattering, only recently resurfacing two years into Era 3, or that this gem was recently born, created after Steven returns to Earth, because the diamonds, both for their system and for their own emotional needs, still desire an ever-present fourth member of their family, and they accept that Steven cannot be the one to do so. But that wouldn't quite explain how we get the other replacement diamonds, where do they come into play? Well, I got to thinking, what if the diamonds don't recognize her? That they never even entertained the idea of replacing Pink and Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl? They don't know her deal either. While we don't have any concrete evidence saying either way, it seems apparent that Steven and the Crystal Gems are just kind of found clueless when this gem shows up. They really don't know why, according to the official movie website, she's swearing vengeance on Steven and the planet. Just that it wouldn't be surprising if there is a connection to Pink Diamond. And I am sure the Crystal Gems, say for maybe Amethyst, is a aware of all cuts of gem in the race. The only thing that could possibly say otherwise is Peridot's introduction at the end of the episode Warp Tour, but as we began to learn more about Homeworld and its different eras, it's apparent that Peridot's Lemon Enhancers is what startled the Crystal Gems. They wanted to know who this specific gem was, and why she was different from all the other Peridots they remember. You guys get the point, the gems likely do not know who she is, and everyone's asking about the diamonds. They can just come into play and shut down this entire operation, right? After all, why would one gem spin the face of the diamonds? Unless she already neutralized them, aka bubbling, I'm not sure how she expects to destroy the entire Earth and Steven and live to see the next day. But that got me thinking, what if she isn't afraid of the diamonds and actually aims to take them out of the picture too because she wasn't created by them? What if this gem was created by another presence in the series? Someone or something that's been the topic of discussion a few times on this channel. No, no, not Sneeple, at least not, not exactly. No, 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 not them, not them, not them. One mystery that Steven Universe left open that this movie could explore is where exactly Gemkind came from. Who created the diamonds? After all, White Diamond did talk as if she was created for a specific purpose in the climax of Change Your Mind. The diamonds are learning how to change and take responsibility for the children they created and put onto the world, but what if that connection between the diamonds and Gemkind wasn't there prior because the diamonds themselves lack that relationship with whoever created them, their own parents? And what if there is reason behind that? You don't just create a race of gem kind meant to assimilate the rest of the world. Oh, I'm sorry, universe? Create leaders who are designed to create genocide. The gems are spreading colonies all over the universe, but why? Do the diamonds themselves even know? Something I'm certain on regardless of the identity of the gem, whatever her name may be, whoever she was created by, no matter what happens, I'm positive her motivation is a consequence of Era 3 and all the change Steven has brought to the galaxy. But what if in this scenario, Steven didn't anger a pre-existing gem, but instead, really ticked off the creators of the diamonds. We know there are other aliens out there. We saw them in Jungle Moon. But if there's gems, there has to be other sapient life beyond humans. Whoever created the diamonds might still be out there. 
And although they may have not contacted the diamonds in a while, if at all, they can still be keeping an eye on them from far, making sure they fulfill their purpose. So when they suddenly see planets being decolonized, homeworld being a hodgepodge without any forced order of things, and seeing that the diamonds were more than fine abandoning their original purpose, they could have been really upset and decided, let's just start over, leading to the creation of the movie villain gem, the new pink diamond. A pink cubic zirconia. But they're not stopping there. What if the plan for the creator of the diamonds, alongside this new villainous gem, is to actually create a brand new diamond authority, new leaders on homeworld, and maybe even a new gem kind as a whole? I've speculated that this giant injector is to create a brand new diamond, and that if this is a failed pink diamond, she's trying to right her wrongs of existing by just creating another pink diamond entirely? Pink diamond -ception? But what if that injector is meant for something else? We see that plenty of gems under Pink Diamond's court were made on Earth, only using up two areas of the planet. At least as far as we're concerned in canon, I know external properties such as Phantom Fable have a winter kindergarten, but don't worry ladies and gents, they said it's not canon, just, just don't worry about it, forget about it. I still might do a breakdown of it, but forget about it. Before we dive back into everything though, I do want to give a huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring this episode. Audible has a huge selection of audiobooks, including a good chunk relating to animation. As someone who wants to know as much as possible about animation, and misses the warm, comfy feeling of being read a goodnight story by their mom, this is nothing short of perfect. For example, there's Planet Simpson, a look at how the hit series defined a generation, there's an audiobook on how to draw cartoons, which is helpful if you want to get into art, you want to become a storyboarder, maybe you want your own cartoon someday, perfect audiobook to start that, how about Joe Bev Hanna-Barbarian, a tribute to Hanna-Barbera cartoons, and beyond these examples there's so much more. Audible members now get more than ever before. Members are able to choose three titles every month, one audiobook, alongside two Audible originals exclusive to the service. They're only on Audible. With the Audible app, you can listen to Audible just about anywhere while doing anything, lifting some weights at the gym, cooking dinner in your kitchen, eating dinner in someone else's kitchen. I don't know your life. Audible members can also get free access to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post delivered daily to the Audible app. What's better than free stuff? Speaking of which, Audible also offers free and easy audiobook exchanges, credits you can roll over for a year, and a library you can keep forever even if you cancel. You can start listening with a 30-day Audible trial, and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Just check out audible.com slash the roundtable or text the roundtable to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash the roundtable or text the roundtable T-H-E-R-O-U-N-D-T-A-B L-E to 500, 500. So what if this giant injector, which we know in 41 hours will completely eradicate the Earth of all living resources, isn't used just to create one gem? What if all the pink goo in this injector is actually intended to make an entire core in one swing? This injector appears to be very different from the ones we're used to in design, not just scale. What if that's because the true creators of gem kind, those responsible for the diamonds, actually updated their injector technology? figuring it out to create multiple cuts of gem with one injector. Just with some modifications like uh, probably being a spaceship, although I'd like to imagine this gem brought her own ship that we'll see and it's gonna be like, you know, just whoa, amazing. But should this be the case, they could also be targeting Pacific planets. Like they were aware the Earth was Pink Diamond's colony, word of mouth probably traveled that Pink Diamond returned as Steven Universe, so they're really aiming to hit where it hurts and finish off the planet completely in order to create a more superior core of pink gems for what's supposed to be a superior pink diamond. I think it's possible that where this gem came from could be left vague by the end of this film, that we still don't have a concrete answer, only for season 6 to blow us all away and reveal, surprise, there wasn't just one new diamond, it's an entire authority, and maybe they already emerged. Behind Steven's back when he wasn't looking, going across planet dismantling the Empire, all those planets showed up on the mysterious creator's radar, allowing them to slowly put their plan in motion and develop a way to replace the Diamond Authority. So although this gem is just the villain for the film, Season 6 could focus on the rest of this Cubic Zirconia Authority, dealing with yellow, blue, and white Cubic Zirconia, or maybe depending on the longevity 
gravity of the show, they'll do what fans thought they originally were going to do with the diamonds, having a season focus on a particular diamond, leading up to the true creator of Gem Kind as the final boss. I think this would be interesting, as the diamonds really brought a threatening presence to the show that a lot of cartoons just weren't able to capture. They were humongous, they're at the top of the chain. They all have their individual powers. They have their own motif in the score. Whenever the diamonds were on screen, you gave them their full attention. And right up to their redemption arc, you were always left wanting more. So while it might feel cheap to just drop more diamonds on us, oh, this is repetitive, it's just gonna end the same way as last time, what if it doesn't? They keep saying what happens after Change Your Mind is an entirely new story, that the Virgin Steve universe we know is done, and that might mean the Virgin Steve universe that redeems its villains is out the door. And besides, we would know who the final boss really was, the true creators. Actually, I, I think I'm just gonna refer to them as that from now, the, the true creators. It's kind of eerie, kind of powerful, and it's to the point. It may be a silly notion, but it's one I'm actually here for. Kind of restores that tension the diamonds brought, while allowing for a new story and a new conclusion to be created, while also fleshing out the world of the show. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? Do you believe we'll see the creators of the diamonds pop up? Could they be the true mastermind behind the villain's intentions? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Vox. We're also on Instagram. Again, check out Inky Icky's Instagram page. Drop a follow, tell them Roundtable sent ya. Special thanks to Art with Coda for creating an awesome thumbnail. For more of his wonderful art, you can find him on Tumblr and Instagram at Art with Coda and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Link down below in the description. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Box, signing out.